the teacher benefits by the knowledge she's given. She gets free and moves on. The people she tried to teach, man, they ain't saying nothing. Yo, man, we going up the block, man, to get these chicks and yeah. Then the army moves in. Hi, how you doing? We're Rome. Now the people have no knowledge, no defense. They perish. Those with knowledge escape. And that's why the knowledge is still available today. We were never conquered. We were never enslaved. You were never a slave. You were never a slave master. You are from that group of people that were way beyond that. And how do I know this? Because you're here now. This same story is repeated for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Truth is out. Hey, truth is over here in the corner. It's right here. It's truth. Most people go, I'm not interested in that. Then the army shows up. Now you have no defense. When knowledge and truth is in your face, it's very important that you heed the knowledge while it's in your face. Here's the first exercise when you walk into the mystery system. First exercise. You would walk in, and there'd be a sign that says, Know thyself, and thou shalt know the universe and God. You may look at that and you say, I don't understand what that means, but I feel something about it, so I'm just going to walk in here and see what I can get. Let me see what they talk about. The teacher then tells you, here's the first lesson. I want you to repeat after me. Now, I'm going to modernize the mystery system for our day today. Let's take the word hip-hop, for instance, H-I-P-H-O-P. And what I want you to do right now is say this word hip-hop to yourself. Don't say it out loud. Just say it to yourself, hip-hop, inside yourself. Don't speak it out loud. Don't use your mouth. Just at the count of three, say to yourself, hip-hop, just a simple word. One, two, three. There's always one. <laughs> you, you, you look at the exercise. You just said hip-hop to yourself. What does that mean? Why is that the first exercise? Here's why. Because you just spoke without using your mouth. You spoke, not the body. You. We can do it again. We can do it again. At the count of three, we're going to say hip hop to ourselves, <laughs> not out loud. One, two, three. Who just said that? This mouth, oh, I'm pointing to my throat here. The larynx, the, the vocal cords, did not vibrate. But you spoke. You said hip hop. Where is that voice? In what dimension is that part of you? Where are you then? If you can speak without the use of the voice, without this, this voice I'm using right now, yeah, yeah, yeah. This voice is a second voice. Your first voice you just used. You just said hip hop and didn't use anything physical. Go further. You heard yourself say hip hop. How can you hear 
yourself, say hip hop if your mouth never opened. You just spoke a word, you heard yourself say it, but the mouth nor the ears were used. If you close your eyes, you can see hip hop better. I can show you the word hip hop, H I P H O P, but if you close your eyes, you can see breaking and seeing graffiti writing, DJ and beatbox all at the same time and in different dimensions of time. You can see hip hop in the past, you can see hip hop in the future. In fact, this other eye can actually see the past. What is the sight that sees the past? These eyes don't see the past. These eyes don't see the future. These eyes only see what is now, in physical reality, by the way. But you have another sight that can actually see past events and future events. You have another sight, another hearing, and another voice that you're just not using. It's always with you. It is your true self. It is your true power. When this inner voice, inner eye, inner ear is awake and aware, the outer eye, outer ear, and outer mouth is controlled. Right now, we are more concerned about this mouth than this mouth. We are more concerned with what this ear hears than what this ear hears, the inner ear, the ear of the heart, the ear or the mouth, ear, and eye of the real you. We keep denying that voice. We keep denying that person. And who are we denying when we deny that person? We deny ourselves. So the first lesson is, first let's realize where we are. Where are we? Well, we are not the body. That's for certain. Because we don't need the body to talk. We don't need the body to see. We don't need the body to hear. We choose to limit ourselves to this ear, this eye, and this mouth. That's what slavery means. A person then chains your physical body and you say, I am hindered. I am chained. No, you're not. Your body is chained. But that inner eye, inner ear, and inner mouth that can go into the past, present, or future at will. At, matter of fact, it lives in this realm all the time. You can escape at any time. This is the beginning of healing and self-revelation. You are not the flesh. You are not your body. You are an inner consciousness. Now, lesson two. And remember, each one of these lessons takes about a year to know. I'm telling you this now. I'm saying this to you now. You, know, you take your notes. You practice this. But really, it takes about a year to know this. Death is impossible because if the flesh drops and I still can speak, see, and hear, whether the flesh is with me or without me. doesn't use the flesh. Start using that part of you now. 
so that when the body does drop off, you're not shocked. You're not like, oh, oh my body is gone. <laughs> In fact, imagine saying that. That's the revelation. Your body drops off, your other eyes see it. <laughs> Your other ears hear it and hear yourself going, there's my body. So who's saying all of that? Who are you listening to? Who are you hearing you? Lesson two is that death is impossible. Here's another reason why it's impossible. Because there is only creation in the universe. Do you realize that creation is the only thing that really exists? Like, even destruction must be created. Think about this. Destruction must be created, but creation can never be destroyed. Like, once you are created, what destruction really is, is a further creation of yourself. Destruction is an unwanted creation. D there is no such thing. Actually, destruction is an illusionary word because what you're doing is further creating. If I had a glass in my hand and dropped it on the floor and it shattered, some people would say, the glass has ended. Others would take a picture of it and say, no, it's now art. Or the glass breaks on the floor. Some say the glass is no longer a glass. Others would say, you're right. It's now a lot of little weapons. There's no such thing as destruction. Everything that is destroyed is really for the creator. And once you realize that nothing can really be destroyed, it can only be further created, you look forward to your further creation. You mean to tell me when I drop this body, I'm going to be in a different dimension? Like I can walk out of other stuff? This is where people get courageous about that. This is where people strap themselves up with explosives. You got no problem pulling it, strangling whatever it takes to detonate. They know this. Those who are serious about their spiritual life, they know. I've got another reality that I live in. I don't need this reality. And you know what? Those people who live like that, meaning live without the fear of death, they never really die. Because their courage protects them. Just because, oh, I'll put it this way, those that fear death die. Because that you really don't understand. You fear death, so when you die, you will lay in your grave. And you'll be like, wow, this is crazy. <laughs> I'm laying here because I've been taught all my life that I'm supposed to lay here. And you will lay there for thousands of years until something or someone comes along and says, get up! And walk! Pick up your bed and walk! Pick up your coffin and walk! Pick up your problems and Pick up your challenges and walk with them. Lesson 
do is that there is no death. When you realize there is no death, you do courageous things in your life. Most people don't do any courageous thing with their life for fear of death. And let me tell you how deep the fear of death goes. It's not so much the fear of dying. It's the fear of failure. People, I hear MCs, you know, your rappers, potential MCs, you know, you know, they say, I really want to do this, man. I really want to get this business. I'm going to be part of this culture. I really want to MC. I feel in my heart. This is me. And he said, well, what's stopping you? Jump on this, I'm running. Well, you know, that's how people get ripped off, man. Well, why are you out there right now doing your thing? Man, you know, these cats out here, man, they, they just be jerking brothers, man. They, you know, I, I just, I don't want to get jerked. I don't want to get robbed. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to. I don't want to fail. I don't want to be hurt. I don't want to lose. But if you knew that getting ripped off was actually a win, you would run. You'd say, hey, I'm running. Rip me off. Quick. Come on. Take me. Everything I got. Reverse your psychology. This is what spiritual training really is. It's the opposite of material thinking. It's the opposite. Material thinking is, I live in this body, I'm on this earth, in this particular place, and if I fail here, I fail, period. It's over for me. That's the end. And you stay stuck there because there's no other knowledge. I'm here to tell you today there is no death. That, my friend, is an illusion. If you begin practicing right now using the other voice, using the other eye, using the other ear, you'll see quickly that you have several existences. I want to stay in this room. That's separate. You die every time you're fired from a job. That is like you say, like you say, I'm a bus driver. And notice what it is. Notice this time I'm saying, I'm speaking quickly, we saw that. A human being would ask, Who are you? They say, I am. I am a bus driver. You bring the whole power of the universe right to your bus driver seat. <laughs> right here. I am a bus driver. And bus driving is cool. Nice job, city job. You know, with 11 million people out of work, you got a job. Be thankful. But you're bringing the entire universe to such a limited position. I am a rapper. That's all? You can't do nothing else? In fact, not that you can't do nothing else, aren't you doing other things? Yeah, you're a rapper, but aren't you a father also? I'm sure you're a father, but aren't you a, a husband? Aren't you someone's son uh, or daughter? Or, you know, you are all kinds of things at once. And this takes you to lesson three. One, you are not the flesh. Two, there is no death. Three, you are a universal being living in several dimensions at once. This is not fairy tale. This is not make believe. 
this is, these are the ancient principles of life itself. This is the mathematics of what the fabric of life is. You will meet me in 10 years from now. You'll see me. I'll see you. And you'll come back and you'll say, man, let me tell you how my life completely changed. Which is a lot of money. 
1986. And he comes up. We find a studio in Houston. He lays down the 50 dollars. Why 50? Because the studio was $25 an hour. What does that mean? The studio was $25 an hour. He only could afford $50, which means he had two hours to record our record. So we went to this guy's house. That's what it was, his house, his apartment. He had an eight-track board, eight tracks. We went, put the vocals on one, <laughs> backgrounds on another, all the kick high hat snares on another, something else on another. Two hours, I did that whole record, one take. We ain't had no time for nothing else. We just go, whoop, next, whoop, go, and we're doing it. We finish the record. He puts the record, okay, you probably understand. He puts the record on a cassette tape. The master recording that we walked out was on a cassette. We walked out. We did it. Yeah. Oh, man. We got yeah, we got it all on a cassette. We took the cassette to, the, to a mastering plant where they made press the vinyl and press the sound bronze, which you listen to to this very day. $50, eight tracks, cassette. The difference was we that was that was our finished master recording. That was what we produced from ourselves, and we treated it as if this was it. <laughs> That's it. Now we know that others like Run DMC and Houdini and LL Cool J, they were in the plush studios. They had 24 tracks, fruit on the table. They like they chilling. <laughs> And they're recording their stuff to digital. They're getting real to real tapes and all of that. And their stuff is going down, quote unquote, professional. We are in somebody's house with eight tracks for two hours only, ran out of there with a cassette. Made the same noise. Ready came out, boom! South Bronx, South South Bronx. Even Run DMC had the look. Even LL had the look. Who are these guys out the Bronx doing it? Ah, that is so nice. How did they get that sound? <laughs> What's the difference between the fist and the hand? What's the difference between a star and a so-called fan? What is that? Perception. Because I act like KRS-One, you treat me like KRS-One. Hmm. In fact, you kind of trap me in KRS-One. <laughs> because once I give that perception out, Usually people don't accept anything else. I'm not just KRS, but I'm a lot of other things. But the perception is KRS, and I'm stuck in that. I'd like to do a booty shake record one day. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you would not accept it from me. You would not accept it. You would say, what the hell is Chris doing? This video he's putting out. What is that? Sure, I mean, why do I mention this? Because three, this is number three. This is lesson number three here. You are many things at once. You are not just who you are now, or who you say you are, or who you're trying to be, or this, that. You're not just that. That's not all that you are. 
You become what you put your focus on. I'll say it again. You become what you put your focus on. When you go to your mother's house, you might have to say, uh, but, but, but keep me in track of time. Um, when you go to your mother's house, father's house, whatever, let's just say I'm, I'm, a, I'm four, so I go to my mother's house. When you go to your mother's house, you become a son. Like me, I'm still paying a restaurant when I'm with my mother. Ain't nothing changed. But in this dimension, I'm a son. That's it. Come on, I gotta go. I got a concert tonight. Boom, I'm out. Hit the stage. I'm around. When do I stop being a son? When I'm with my mother as a son, am I not also a rapper? I leave my mother and I leave the stage and I cling to my wife. Now my husband. My children. Oh, now my dad. Well, I leave all that alone and hang out with my man. Yo, what up? I don't know what you would call that. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm that. <laughs> I, I'm that too. The names you call yourself become your nature. You choose the reality you're going to have. By your talents. Today I am sun. Then you get sun powers. And I mean, think about this. You get sun powers. Meaning, as a sun, I like you start doing sun things. <laughs> you know, mom, you need me help, dad. You need me help. I, I'm your son. <laughs> you start looking for love, and I know somehow you're all mushy. Because I'm a son. Uh, when I become a father, am I not still a son? Of course I am. But now I've chosen the nature or name of father. Now I have father powers. I am a mother. I am a sister. I am a daughter. Each one of these titles have powers with them. A sister doesn't have the same power as a mother. A mother doesn't have the same powers as a daughter. But they're all the same people. But you choose. I'm a mother. And a mother has mother powers. There are a, there's a certain mentality that comes with being a mother different from being a daughter. There's a certain mentality that comes with being a daughter that mothers love her. So what if you say, I'm God? What if you say, I'm the devil? <laughs> What if he said, I'm a dog? What if he said, uh, I'm a lion? You're naming you, and what you name yourself, you give yourself that nature. Ain't nobody perfect. So for you, <laughs> ain't nobody perfect. You're going to be meeting the perfect people your whole life, and you yourself remain imperfect. You can say, therefore, be ye perfect as your heavenly father, and seek perfection of yourself. Suddenly, you have perfection power. This is how you manipulate the fabric of life. Life is intelligent. Life, reality, is intelligent. It's thinking. The third lesson.
lesson here is you are a universal being. You choose the realities you're going to have based on the names you choose for yourself. This is why hip hop is so great because the first thing we say in hip hop, we say, Yo, I want to be an MC. He said, Yo, what's your name? My name is Bob. Get out of here with that. You ain't going nowhere, Bob. <laughs> but that same person says, Yo, I want to be a man. I'm a DJ, man. What's your name, man? Yo, I'm Super Bob Ski Grandmaster B.O.B. <laughs> oh, work. Oh, okay. Now Cats is backing up off you. Oh, oh. It all starts with what you call you. You have the authority to set your reality the way you want it, based on who you choose to be. You are a universal being. You can be anybody you want. There used to be a time on the DV, I'm going to lesson four. There used to be a time on this earth where human beings were able to change their color at will. That's why we have so many different races. Because there was a time in, in human history where if we walked into a tropical area, we would turn into the color we needed to be to be there. When we walk into cold areas, we would turn into the environment we needed to be to be there. Watery areas, mountainous areas, forest areas, whatever. We would adapt to the environment. That is the greatest human ability. One of the ability to adapt. You get stuck in a situation. Why do we worry? Because we can't adapt to it. You walk in. Friday, you got a big check. Like, yeah, I'm chilling. Monday, you walk in, you're fired. <laughs> you're like, whoa, what am I going to do? I'm finished. Why do we come to that conclusion? Why can't we adapt and say, well, now I'm unemployed? <laughs> and I love it. Oh, because deep down inside, we really don't. We start worrying. I don't want to pay the mortgage, the cell phone. Ah, man, what am I going to do? And here's a, what am I going to do? What? Anytime you ask a question, that means you're in ignorance of something. What am I going to do? Who am I going to get? That's you in ignorance asking. How am I supposed to do this? And then the universe brings you to a lecture like this. And the answers are coming out. And it's not what I'm saying that is the answer. It's how you're feeling right now that is the answer. It's not words. It's not talk. It's inspiration. It's feeling. Lesson four. What my time look like? Good. Lesson four. I'll speed this up. Once you realize that you are a universal being, there is no death. And well, let me get to lesson four. Once you realize this, I'm away.
fear is the biggest hindrance. Fear. Fear. Once you have this knowledge, just because you have this knowledge, doesn't mean you're going to use it. Just because you know this, doesn't mean that you want to jump outside and stand in front of a bus and say, this bus will stop. You're going to do all that. But you need courage. Courage. This is why once you shed the fear of death, it's easier to get courage. How do you get courage? Feel courage. Courageous acts. You know what real courage comes from? Being yourself. Fear comes from not being yourself. Period. Fear is, I'm in a situation that I'm not supposed to be. I don't know how to get out. I don't have enough knowledge to know what's going to happen to me. I'm worried. Do you have the courage to be you? I said this on the hardest thing. Do you have the courage to be you? Most of us are not the real us because of the consequences of being the real us. You know, if I was the real, like some people, you know, say, you know, if I was the real me, yo, Chris, man, you say, if I was the real me, I'd get kicked out of school. If I was the real me, I'd make it arrested tonight. If I was the real me, not this last, but I mean, I'm going to be a real me. The people may go, ooh. We don't want, ooh. We don't want, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> we don't want these reactions. We want everybody cool. And we want everybody coming at us like, hi, how are you doing? Everything will be all right. Yeah. Smile, everybody's smiling. We don't want the consequences. The, the real me, for me to be the real me, for real, for real, I may have to leave her. For me to be the real me, real me, I may have to leave him. But I don't want the consequences. I love him. I want to be with him. Or her. Or them. Or it. Whatever it is. We're, we're trying to avoid the consequences. So what do we do? We put a mask on. We walk around society holding the real us back. The real us never comes out because we try to make everybody else feel comfortable around us. Or make you feel comfortable. Okay, but if you're okay, I'm going to make you feel comfortable too. And then you and them, and, and, and then, but what about you? When you won't feel comfortable. Well, you won't start feeling comfortable when you get courage and you say, you know what? I never liked you. Get out of here. <laughs> that takes courage. That, that one act, that one statement, and it's not insensitive. It's not a, it's not a diss like, yo, I don't care about you. It's, I want to go to college. You want to stand in the corner and drink. I'm not going there. Goodbye, Dad. Another courage? You went to college. I'm just using college as an example. You went to college. You get a break. In fact, no, you finished college. Four years ago, you went there, you struggled to do You went there four years, you go up to your graduation. They gave you your receipt, I mean your degree. <laughs> Same dudes on the same court. 
water. You walking by. Man, look at so and so. Man, Johnny think he all that. Man, he been to college. Now he think he better than us. Oh, man, look at him. So what do we do? We go, we go, we go. No, I'm just as stupid and backwards and going nowhere as you are. I'm going to dumb myself down so that you guys who are going nowhere will feel comfortable around me. Look at this. I just spent four years and thousands of dollars elevating myself, and I'm going to hide that now because average folk think that makes me better than them. You goddamn right it does. <laughs> and here's where the courage comes in. If more of us went back to the, to the neighborhood with a courageous attitude, not I'm better than you, or I've been this, no, not that. Just, you go back to the neighborhood. Yo, Johnny, you think he better? Yeah, I do. Word up, what y'all doing? Drinking, what y'all doing? Talk with authority if you have the authority. And that goes back to the courage of the beginning. That's where the authority comes from. The authority is, I'm going to be me whether you like it or not. That's authority. I'm going to do this whether you like it. I'm going to show that. I'm going to go here. I'm going to. Now, if you're not my friend, then you're just not. If you're not my mother, my father, my sister, my brother, my husband, my wife, if you're not that, then go by. But I'm not compromising myself. The most important thing to me in the world is me. I'm not going to compromise that for your insecurities. Damn. Your insecurities. I have to dumb myself down. I got to turn my volume down. To make you feel comfortable and you ain't do the work I did? No. 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 You need to have the courage to be you. To be you. Now, once you put all this together, you got courage. You are a spiritual being. You are awake now. You're know, like, you know what? <laughs> when I leave this lecture, <laughs> I'm going to write down three things that I know I am. And I'm going to live these things out. I'm a DJ, first and foremost. So I can have my husband or whatever. Whatever your values are. Whatever they think you about. Whatever you are. I'm a husband first. I'm a son first. I'm a DJ first. Tom. Good. I'm a son first. You know. Whatever your value system dictates. Here's a part of lesson. Here's the final lesson. And it's not the final lesson. <clears throat> it's, it's the lesson that I have for my time. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, hopefully, you're not just getting my words, but you're getting the spirit of what I'm saying. Which, when you leave, you can further this talk in your own mind. You will discover things that I need to get to. Here's a final lesson. <clears throat> Stretch the five minutes a couple of years old. What is what I just said? Lesson. Last lesson. How do you create wealth in your life? How do you get money? That's what they have. Hip hop is a $10.5 billion culture. <clears throat> Accurate 
documentation of how we live. Move the camera to society and look at where they were. Millie Nelson, broken glass everywhere. People pissing on the station like they just don't care. Can't take the moment. That's where we live. Right here. Broken glass. Built back in the building. You know what our fun was? Jumping on mattresses. The little kids were jumping on mattresses. We would play. We would push each other in the car, the supermarket car. You know, we'd get a supermarket car. We'd steal a supermarket car. <laughs> and put our friends in and ride each other up and down the block. We had games like Skelly. All the tops. And all street and games that improvised what we had. Here's how wealth is created. Wealth is also a matter of perception. Wealth means well-being. It doesn't mean money. It means well-being. Wealth and health are the same things. Wealth and peace are the same things. Wealth and love. Wealth and knowledge. Wealth and understanding are all the same things. Riches deal with money. Riches are a part of wealth. Riches are a part of a piece of wealth. How do you cause wealth and include money? Wealth that includes money. Perception. Here's how hip hop started. Two guys are sitting together in the hood. We ain't got nothing. I got 10%, he got five. <clears throat> and we're sitting there with nothing. The United States has already said our generation is called Generation X. That's what they call it, Generation X. Meaning, here's what I mean. You are from that group that have a father, feeling a war, heroin, crack on the street, cocaine. You, y'all, you're finished. Y'all either going to jail, cemetery, hospital, you're either going to one of these institutions, and your mind is going to get twisted up, or you're dead. This is what it was like for us, for real. Do research on the civil rights movement. Do real research on this. We're in the ghetto itself with no money whatsoever. The United States government said, we don't care about you. We're waiting for you to die. Literally, I don't know if y'all can really get this. Imagine a government waiting for a population to die. That's what we were born into. We're sitting here. Here's how we got out. Be a man, we shall. Now, I, I say I, it's not me. I'm using, I'm using me as a metaphor. This happened all over the Bronx. One guy would say to the other guy, <clears throat> yo, check this out. I'll keep on bringing and singing and to get this is ringing and singing and gleaming and dreaming true and seeing with meaning. Now, the guy over here would go, he has two choices. Yo, that's the wackest drama I ever heard in my life. You're garbage, and I'm out of here. <laughs> Once he said that, both I'm, I'm powerless, I've been demoted, and so has he. Because he said, you're garbage, but you're standing next to garbage. You're saying that's the wackest rhyme. That's that, that, get out of here with that. Right when you say that, you've damned yourself. Here's the other side to it. 
I'll keep on bringing and singing until your ears is ringing. Yo, that was dope. That was the hardest rob I ever heard say it again. Yo, I'll keep on bringing and singing until your ears is ringing. Yo, you the man. Now, I'm empowered. Yeah, I'm the man. Word. Yeah. This person is empowered because they're standing next to someone with value now. Look at this. When you disrespect your brother or sister, you deny yourself wealth. The more compliments you give to your neighbor, the richer you get. The more you walk to somebody and say, even if somebody said a whack rhyme, like even if the person over here, he said, um, it's getting hot. <laughs> <laughs> America says that's garbage. We say, I don't believe you. I think we hot. I think, I think what he do it makes a lot of sense. And you know what happens? You know what happens? Because we believe in ourselves and we throw that energy back and forth amongst ourselves. Now we're creating wealth, value, 
community, industry. We got our own thing here. It don't matter what someone else thinks. Do you think I'm hot? Yeah, I think you hot for thinking I'm hot. <laughs> so let's get this on. Now, the two of us are together, and all we have to do is stay unified. Do you hear me? Unified. All we got to do is stay together. We ain't got to have knowledge. We ain't got to know spiritual law. We ain't got to, we could be any hits, and a lot of us were. And we said, all I got to do is love my brother. All I got to do is bring value to my man. That's it. Chris? It. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to interrupt because oh, there's, right there's, here. there's lots of people who want to ask questions and we need to take a break, right? You know what? Let me say this. You've got lesson five. There are more lessons to have. I thank you for listening to me for this long. Thank you. Thank you. Sincerely. Thank you. We'll take a break and come right back. Before you leave, can I just say, everybody who's up on the, on the balconies, if you do want to ask questions, you're going to have to try and make your way down here because obviously we need to get the mic to you so you can say your questions, all right? And also, don't forget, when you leave here, go to puresocial.co.uk because they're trying to do a lot more events like this to get together and talk. All right.